Lipica, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, please tell us, uh, uh, please introduce yourself fully. Please tell us about your work and please tell us a story. So hello everyone, namaskar. My name is uh, Lipika Mohanty. I live in Bhubaneswar. I have worked as an educator and a communication coach for a long time. And actually my storytelling journey began uh, during those jobs as a requirement of those jobs. And the last five years had been into professional storytelling in different spaces. And this is the first time I'm telling story in Eric's uh, storytelling circle. Thank you so much, Eric, for giving me this opportunity to tell a story here. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, my story for today is uh, a story from Sarala Mahabharat, that is Nabagunjara. Sarala Mahabharat is the only retelling of uh, Vyasa's Mahabharat in Odia. This is its unique feature. So the story goes like this. Draupadi had five husbands and her five husbands were brothers, the Pandavas. So in order to maintain harmony and uh, peace in the family, the brothers had promised among themselves that they should never see each other's intimate moment with Draupadi. And whoever breaks the promise have to leave the palace and go for penance for 12 long years. And along with that, they had decided that each of the brother should leave a particular belonging of his at the doorstep when they were inside Draupadi's chamber. So for Yudhisthira, it was his shoes, and for Bhima, it was his mace, and for Arjuna, it was his bow, and for Nakula, it was his axe, and for Sahadeva, it was his sword. So one day, it so happened that when they were at the court, a Brahmin hurried inside, and he, he said he wanted to meet the king. But Yudhisthira was not present at that time in the court. So Arjuna told him to have a seat and wait for the king to come. But the Brahmin wouldn't listen. He said he is in a hurry and he want to meet him immediately. Again, Arjuna tried to pacify him and told him to wait until the king comes. But then the Brahmin threatened he said he would burn down the place into ashes if he's not allowed to meet the king right then. So Arjuna hurried inside the palace to look for Yudhisthira. He looked everywhere, he couldn't find Yudhisthira. So he thought maybe Draupadi would know where he is. So he rushed into Draupadi's chamber. There he broke the promise unknowingly Yudhisthira was with Draupadi. Arjuna felt guilty. At the very moment, he left that place and he came back to the court. But there he couldn't find the Brahmin. He had disappeared. So then Arjuna got ready to leave the palace and go to the forest. So as he walked, and another thing, why wasn't Yudhisthira shoes at the doorstep was yet another long story for some other time. So Arjuna walked, he walked, walked, and walked along the forest. As he was going, the Brahmin appeared before him. And actually, that Brahmin was Agni Devata, the god of fire. He had tricked Arjuna into all these things. It was his game. So Arjuna would come out of the palace and go to the forest because Agni had a mission which, which was to be accomplished through Arjuna. Agni was actually suffering from severe ailments because he had consumed whatever had gone to the pyre during a yagna, which was for 100 long years by a king. And that had caught maladies in him. And he wanted to get cure of that disease. And that he could have done by consuming the medicinal herbs and plants that were there in the big 
Pandava forest. But Indra would not allow him to do so. Whenever Agni would spew the fire to burn down the trees and plants and to consume them, Indra would pour torrential rain and the fire would get extinguished. So he knew Arjuna was Ajaya, means nobody can defeat him, not even Indra. So he had wanted Arjuna's help and that was his way of taking Arjuna out of the palace. And he ordered Arjuna to do that. And Indra wouldn't allow this to happen because Indra's friend, Takshak, the Naga and his family were residing in the forest. And they did not, Indra did not want that his friend should die because of this fire. So Arjuna obeyed uh, Agni's order and there was a fierce fight between Indra and Arjuna. Indra with all his gods and demons had a ferocious, this fierce fight with Arjuna and it continued for days. Many animals got killed. The forest got in fire. It was terrible forest fire. And finally, Indra could kill, the most of the animals got killed, they got burned and Agni could heal himself by consuming all those plants and herbs. But then Indra heard a celestial voice which said that your friend, the Naga, has escaped from the forest and you cannot win Arjuna. So an end should come to this battle. So Indra came down and there was a, the, the fight came to an end. And not only that, Indra gave Arjuna this Gandiva bow at that time. So after that, this work has been done. Arjuna again continued in his penance. And one day, by that time, he had traveled a long distance. He was sitting on the top of a mountain and that name of the mountain was Manibhadra mountain. When you are sitting and have doing his penance, all of a sudden, a very strange creature appeared before him. At first, Arjuna was very terrified. <clears throat> Thereafter, he was also mesmerized at the way it looked. It was a creature which was a composite of nine animals. It had the head of a rooster, the neck of a peacock, and the body of a lion. And it stood on three legs. One leg was that of the elephant, the other was that of the tiger, and the third one was that of the horse. And the fourth one was the arm of a human being. And it has the tail of a serpent, and it had a hump of a bull. Arjuna had never seen such a thing before. And he thought of immediately he picked up his bow and he wanted to kill it down. Then there was a voice that imagination of human is finite, whereas infinite is the imagination of the universe. So submit to it. And then the creature just brought a flower to the to Arjuna and he said, don't you recognize me? And immediately Arjuna could know that it was an avatar of Vishnu himself. Like the Viswarupa Krishna had showed him at the battle of that um, Kurukshetra. So he said it is also one of his Viswarupa. And he immediately paid his obeisance to that Nabagunjara. That creature is named Nabha Gunjara. Nabha means nine and Gunjara means animal, the composite form of nine animals. And then Krishna had actually, he is Krishna is Arjuna Sakha, his friend. And he had gave him important life lessons at different points of time in his life. So here through Nabha Gunjara, Krishna says, that the ultimate reality is one, but it appears different to different people depending on their point of view 
and their innate nature. And Krishna expressed that there is a plurality of approach in understanding the reality, but the ultimate reality is one. And at that point, Krishna came back to his own form and he embraced Arjuna and said, your penance is over and now it is time to go back to Hastinapur. So here my story ends, but I have some pictures to show. Could you please share, Eric? This is the picture of Nabagunjara, you can see. This is the head of the rooster and the neck of a peacock and the arm of a human arm. And this is the leg of the elephant, tiger and horse. And the tail is a serpent and the hump is that of the bulls. This Nabagunjara picture is so popular that you can find it in many art museums all over the world. And this picture is that from the Metropolitan Museum, Art Museum of New York City. And it is actually created in India, but as a collection of their Asian pictures, it is there. Can you have the second picture, please? This second picture is a Pattachitra here. This is the scene of Nabagunjara where Arjuna is paying his obeisance to Nabagunjara. I must say that the original work of this scene is there in the northern wall of the Puri Jagannath temple. That, that is where it has been sculpted. And this picture is always this uh, Patachitra is an artwork of Odisha where they do it like this. And Nabakunjara motif has been used in many handlooms, hand fabrics and everything in silken robes. And uh, it is very much talked in this art circle. And this picture is very popular and famous. Can you have the third one, please? This is the third picture. This is the disc atop the famous Jagannath temple in Puri. There also Nabagunjara is carved on the metal disc. The eight of them are there looking towards the flag post. And here it is sculpted in metal. Eric, could you please say the fourth one? Even Nabagunjara is used as a, in this game of Ganjapa. Ganjapa is a card game. It is usually played in uh, Puri district and Ganjam district. Actually, it was there from a Persian game. Here, Nabagunjara is used as the king's card and Arjuna's card is considered as the minister's card. So this is the card of color card games. So this is what I have to tell about Nabagunjara and how it has been, how this picture is so very popular. Even in uh, many religion temples, you can see either it is in the ceiling or in the side, this Nabagunjara is sculpted. Uh, one is in the Birupaksha temple in Hampi, Karnataka. There also you can find this. And I have Googled many things, maybe in Google, you all can find many other pictures and where you can see Nabagunjara. So this is my story of Nabagunjara. That's all, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, as, as Barry has written in the chat, uh, I love that the imagination of a human is finite, but the imagination of the universe is infinite. Yes. That is true. Anybody else, any thoughts? Uh, this, thank you, this. Lipika, ma'am, uh, for sharing mm -hmm. this lovely story. I'm not aware of this Nabagunjara. I know about the uh, play cards, 
but i saw many mm-hmm. other images not this laba guncha naba guncha that was really nice and excellent info beautifully said thank you liputa actually why, why this story appealed to me so much that uh, in many it has a different world views actually in greek story as iliad had quoted like um, this um, hercules slaying the hydra the serpent with the seven heads because they say that is it is very monstrous and evil whereas in this case nabagunjara god says that it is the human mind has the ability to understand differences so we have to submit it because you are as divine as the creature so it is not considered evil or monstrous so there is a different world views so that is why i picked up the story and i liked it so much so i wanted to share Oh, wonderful. Yes, that being certainly is is the ultimate creation of imagination. Yes. Of of yes. fantasy. Yes. Hmm. Okay, shall we move on to the next story? Very good. Thank you again, Lipika. Thank you so much.